Okay, we're just gonna hop in back into our ninja underscore AI controller where you did the AI perception. So that'll be an AI, ninja AI controller. From event begin play, we're gonna cast our ninja AI. I'm just changing my music. <laughs> cool. So we're casting to our ninja blueprint, which is this ninja here. So your ninja's controller is trying to communicate back to your actual ninja pawn. Get ninja AI, let's get the controlled pawn so it knows what it's getting from the ninja blueprint. And we're gonna right click this blue thing and we're gonna promote to a variable. This variable will be accessed later. We're then gonna go back to our behavior tree. And this time, instead of new task, we're gonna create what's called a service. I'll give you a random name again, but it's gonna put it in the same folder as your ninja behavior tree. We're gonna rename this to NPC speed. So let's open that up. Instead of event receive activation AI, we're gonna do event receive activation. We're gonna cast to the ninja controller, ninja underscore controller instead of the pawn itself. And we're gonna try and grab the ninja from there. So you see th these two values, get this ninja VP, set as ninja VP, it comes under variables. If you can recall in the ninja AI controller, that's the variable that we set here. So yeah, doing this part like this, it just allows us to grab the actual ninja blueprint from the AI controller in a service. <laughs> so it's casting your controller and it's trying to grab the ninja blueprint from there because your controller until ultimately controls the AI of the behavior tree. So from ninja BP, we're going to grab the character movement. Oh, sorry. Yeah, character movement of your actual ninja. Get character movement. And we are then going to set its max walk speed yeah set max walk speed and we're gonna just plug this exit value onto here so it should look like something like this we're then gonna promote this flow into a variable so we can access it somewhere else open that up with the eye icon let's hit compile And we're gonna make a new addition to the chase player. That'll be an enemy ninja AI chase player. We're gonna make a new a variable, a new blackboard key. Let's just name this a default. Make sure it's publicly accessible. Then we're gonna set blackboard value as bool. Set that to true and plug in just this a variable here. So yep, your chase player will now looks like something like this. These two extra code pieces were added before the finish execute. Now let's hop back into our behavior tree. So NPC speed is compiled, behavior tree. From here, we're gonna right click the random roam or the sequence. We're gonna add a service called NPC speed, which is the one we just created. And we're gonna set this to max walk speed to say 100. So we're able to access max walk speed because we converted this to a variable and we made it publicly accessible. And we're gonna click this, copy and paste this into the chase player sequence. We're gonna set this at the default value 400, which was the original speed of the ninja. Okay, so your code should look something like this. And we're actually gonna create a new blackboard key. We're gonna set this to a boolean named keep following player. Question mark, K sensitive. Hop back into here and make sure a new var zero is set to key following player. So as, as it's um, chasing the player, it's gonna set this boolean val variable to read true. So if we recall here, we set this blackboard value 
as bool as true. So the boolean will be true instead of reading false. Once it ch starts chasing the player. So once it runs down to sequence, keep following player will be set to true because technically you are, the ninja is going to keep following the player once it sees it. Alright, so we'll just add a new blackboard base condition over here. We'll rename it the self actor to instead say keep following player. Set this is not set. And we'll make it read observer aborts both. And we're actually going to delete this can see player is set. And we'll just play it. We'll see how it works. So it sees you, it sees you. If it loses a vision of you, it still sees you and follows you. That way it isn't janky where it loses sight of you for one second and it doesn't know where you are. Yep, so once it sees you, it just keeps following you. But we can hop into the viewport here. For example, we'll we'll hide this ninja behind this wall here and we'll make this player be behind this wall as well. And we'll just see how that works. Alt P. So it's really slow right now, the ninja, because it's a roaming. That's kind of janky looking, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so yeah, it's random roaming. We're hiding, and once it sees us, yeah, it sees us, and now it starts his chasing sequence where it goes back to his normal speed of 400 and keeps chasing us. If it loses sight, it still knows where we are and keeps chasing it because it's running down his chase sequence right now over here. Yep. Essentially, your behavior tree is selecting between these two things. If your ninja cannot see the player, and if it if it's not gonna keep following the player, it makes it speed 100 and it finds a random location and does this random roam. But once it sees the player, it sets the speed to normal speed, it finds a player and chases the player, and sets this key following player variable to true. So once it's true, it never runs through here because this key following player is set to false. It will only run through the random roam if key following player is set to false. But over here, we're setting this to true, if you can recall. Yep, key following player set to true with this new blackboard key. So we're going to fix up the animation speed of the walk. So let's head back into my assets, enemies, ninja animations the walk over here so I'll right double click the green animation sequence not animation montage and we're gonna set this rate scale to 0 0.5 so it's slower so let's play that and see how it plays out slower even slower 0 0.2 some improvements required but it's up to you to play with these values but it is getting better I'm pretty sure hmm yeah that looks okay I guess another thing we can do is to open up the animations the blend space and if you can recall walk is in the middle then run at the end, then idle. So since we're gonna bring this walk back to 100, and we'll just see how that plays out. I think I like that. So instead of blending, it's just doing its exact walk animation without blending idle and walk. Yep, that's okay. We can even set the speed higher of the walk animation. 
it's yeah, set zero point five. That should be okay. Yeah, it's really up to you to place these values. What do you think looks best? Please don't see me. Please let me see your feet. Yep, that's good. I quite like that. Yep, now it sees us, chases us. Okay. Great. Save all. We have left new assets to save. Congrats, you now have an AI that detects, has a roam feature and has a sight feature and chases you. So well done. If you got this far. <laughs> AI is not easy.